many times when you're studying history, the answers you're given are as though it's black and white, that we know exactly how something happened. I'm not going to tell you that. When it comes to the history of theater, no one really knows how it started. No one knows if it started in different ways, in different places, at different times. If perhaps it started as dance and then was forgotten and later on came back as song and then that was forgotten and later on came back as storytelling. We just don't know. The truth is that's the way it is with all theater history. For instance, and we'll get to this later, but we have a very good idea what the theaters in Greece looked like during the Hellenistic period. Uh, and we have a very good idea what the plays look like 150 or 200 years before that. We can only guess what kind of plays they did in Hellenistic theaters, and we can only guess what kind of theaters they did those earlier plays in. We try to make educated guesses, but they're just guesses. So, when it comes to the origins of theater, there are five chief theories, and I am looking on page um, 44 in your theater appreciation textbook. The five theories are the storytelling theory, and that's the idea that um, perhaps as uh, as a way of passing down history, or more likely the way of passing down great events. For instance, say, uh, the story of a fantastic hunt or a fantastic harvest, the story of a great victory over uh, an enemy. Those kinds of stories could have been passed down from generation to generation, and finally uh, somebody started acting them out a little bit. Uh, and then you, at some point, it becomes theater. The next theater is the uh, the next theory is the dance theory. The dance theory holds that um, much like storytelling, they were using some form of rhythmic movement, some kind of dance to. Um, imitate the behavior of people or events or, or something going on. Uh, perhaps they were using costumes, perhaps not. But somewhere along the line, as well as dance, they started using sounds and words, and through that theater was born. The next theory is a reasonably new theory, but that's the judicial theory. The idea, and this the, one of the reasons this theory seems plausible, is that um, all early theater was judged in Greece, and um, so the the idea goes that one side of a complaint would tell the story to a judge or a group, a panel of judges, and this judge would, uh, or panel of judges, would listen to both sides of the story and the person who best told the story would win. Um, and out of that, people got better and better at dramatizing their stories and somehow from that theater began. The next idea is the ritual theory. That um, trying to make sense of their surroundings, of the seasons, of of the cyclical nature of their lives, they started attributing perhaps certain rituals to certain seasons to bring about harvest, to bring about a good hunt, to bring about victory at war, to bring about those kinds of things. And this ritual, whatever it was, developed into a type of theater. So if you had a war ritual but you were at peace, that war ritual may become theater. If you had a ritual to, to uh, you know, to get a good hunt, but the hunting has been really good for quite a few years. Perhaps that ritual becomes theater. And the last theory, which is perhaps my favorite, is that one morning some ancient Greek woke up and said, "Oh my God, I have just got to have theater in my life." It's called the Great Man Theory, and that theory really is that that one day a person woke up and. Um, just decided, had this vision, this image of what theater should be, and started creating theater. 
it is entirely possible that all of these theories are true about the origins of theater that different areas developed differently that perhaps there were elements of storytelling dance judicial and ritual and that one day a great man woke up and realized that if he put all those elements together he would end up with an art form like I said we don't really know but you will be expected uh, to know all of these then if we go back to um, what really is the start of all um, Western literature that it's um, based on Homer and I'm not talking Simpson I'm talking Homer as an, uh, an ancient Greek poem and this poet uh, is attributed with writing the Iliad and the Odyssey and um, which were kind of a uh, a Bible to the Greeks, and I don't mean Bible as in the way we think of a Bible being handed down by the gods, but we the Greeks thought of it as true. Every word written in the uh, Iliad and the Odyssey they believed to be fact, and what Homer was writing about was. Um, the period of time surrounding the Trojan War um, and he attributed a lot of the ups and downs of the Trojan Wars a lot of the ups and downs of the royal families of the kings of the time to the gods and they had a pantheon of gods not just a singular god and um, it's important to keep in mind though and if you look on page the timeline on top of page 46 that um, we know for a fact that there was a Troy we know for a fact that Greek destroyed Troy in approximately 1193 BC um, right after that when right after that war Greek experienced a period of dark ages not horrendous dark ages but dark ages um, all of the various areas of Greece came together to fight the Trojans and they put and it took quite a while to defeat them and uh, theoretically it was all over the idea that um, the a prince of Troy eloped or ran off with stole Helen who was the wife of a king in Greece and they all decided to go to uh, war with Troy to get her back so Helen is the face that launched a thousand ships along the way they encountered all kinds of difficulties they made sacrifices of daughters they made all kinds of difficult choices but eventually they win but right after they won they have put so much effort financial and resources and everything into the war effort that civilization kind of falls apart for several hundred years excuse me while I get a drink um, Homer then wrote about the Trojan War somewhere between say four and five hundred years some people would put it less than that but say four or five hundred years um, after the Trojan War so he had no first-hand accounts of what happened in the Trojan War it is just you know and because of that period of Dark Ages and Dark Ages is a period when there's ver there's very little trade um, there's very little education there's very little art people are afraid of one another there's no central government to, ser uh, to um, protect them we'll get another major dark ages we'll talk about after the fall of the Roman Empire and that's what we tend to think of as the dark ages but there have been minor dark ages in different areas um, all throughout history I guess my whole point here is that Homer really didn't know what was going on in the Greek War but um, 
he was passing on he was passing on um what he could, and the people took it as gospel. Now, it is also to be noted that Homer probably didn't actually write the Iliad and the Odyssey himself. It is more than likely that his students wrote it, or even, perhaps, that there was no man named Homer, that there was a group of various um, poets who put it together and somehow they've been attributed to a man named Homer. We will really probably never know unless someone invents a time machine. Okay. All early plays, which is, and plays are the beginning of literature in the Western world, all early plays are based on the Ho uh, Homer's Iliad and the Odyssey. So they're, they're talking about the Greek War and the royal families around them, about the, the, the sacrifices, the killings, the, the revenge, lots of revenge. Um, if you put all the uh, um, family that isn't talked about in the, the Greek plays together and or in the Iliad and the Odyssey, you'd have the Jerry Springer show. <coughs> Excuse me. Now, we have the belief that much of this Bible-like uh, story was told over and over again um, in some form of entertainment. It could be dance, it could be song, it could be, as I talk, any one of those things. But we do know that um, in, God, what is it, 526, 5, I should get this information down to you exactly, um, that in 534 B.C., Thespis stepped forward from whatever the art form was and for the first time at least he's recorded as being the first we have um, someone stepping forward and saying listen to me I am Agamemnon so up to that point we just had people talking about other people he was the first one to step forward and say I am that other person monumental that is why actors to this day are known as thespians because Thespis was the first actor now he did this at these at a big festival called the Dionysus festival the Dionysus festival um, was a yearly festival held in Athens there were smaller festivals held in these smaller cities but the, the, the festival of Dionysus in Athens was the, the big one and um, Thespis IV uh, in, in 534 BC was the first known winner of the Athens Dionysus festival um, he will be recorded as, in all, as all, for all time unless we find some other record uh, which is always possible with history um, I think I'm going to stop this right here so I can get my head together for what I'm going to I'm going to babble about next.